The date was August 15, 1887. The Sacramento Union newspaper read, Adolph Teichert, 2116 M Street, Sacramento, manufactures of artificial stone for sidewalks. So launched Adolph Teichert as a self-employed businessman at age 33 and kicked off the more than 130-year history of California's oldest active contractor and what has become one of California's most prominent heavy construction, materials production, and land development companies. This is the story of Teichert. In 1866, John Julius Adolf Teichert was living in Nienstetten, a small village near Hamburg, Germany. The young Teichert began his apprenticeship as a stonemason to help the family make ends meet after the early death of his father. By the age of 20, Adolf was considered an expert mason. In 1874, he immigrated to America seeking better work opportunities. After arriving in New York City, he began working for master mason John Schillinger. Adolf learned to use the Schillinger method, a patented concrete placing process that was a precursor to today's expansion joints. Word of Adolf's skills had reached a San Francisco firm by the time he was 21, and the California Artificial Stone Paving Company hired him to move west and help build up San Francisco's sidewalks and streets. During this time, Teichert supervised construction all over San Francisco, including sidewalks for mansions on Knob Hill and pavement around the Mark Hopkins Hotel, San Francisco City Hall, and Golden Gate Park. In 1879, Adolf Teichert became a naturalized citizen and married Carrie Knoll. Shortly after the California Artificial Stone Company was awarded the contract for constructing sidewalks and other concrete work around the State Capitol Building in Sacramento, Adolf Teichert was named superintendent for the work. During this time, the Teichert family expanded as Adolf and Carrie had four children. Their only son, Adolf Jr., was born in 1885. With fond memories of his time in the valley, Adolf decided to move his family to Sacramento and start his own business. The fledgling Teichert business enjoyed early success providing concrete work for sidewalks, carriage drives, and floors. Building on his earlier experience, in 1894, Teichert was awarded a contract to provide sidewalks to the California State Capitol grounds at the cost of 10 and 7 8 cents per foot. Other early projects included concrete flat work for the Weinstock Lubin Building and the Hale Brothers Building in 1910. Adolf Teichert was known as a skilled perfectionist with a reputation for honesty and integrity. Growing up, Adolf Jr. worked for his father after school and weekends performing tasks such as hanging the warning lanterns on paving jobs, bedding down the horses, and carving grade and form stakes with a hatchet. After graduating from UC Berkeley, Adolph Jr. joined his father as a partner in 1912. This new partnership took the name A. Teichert & Son. Adolph Jr. was a visionary who recognized California's continued growth would require significant road improvements. The firm added highway construction in 1912 when they were the successful low bidder on one of the earliest contracts awarded by the newly organized Highway Department of the State of California. Contract A2 was for construction of a six-mile portion of concrete highway near Stevens Creek Bridge in San Jose. By 1915, Adolph Sr., who nearing retirement age, found himself heading up a rapidly expanding business. Adolph Jr. brought fresh ideas into the company, and he persuaded his father to bid more major construction projects. The company focus began to shift from sidewalks and cellar floors to building roads and highways. In that same year, a. Teichert & Son built its first hot plant to help meet the need for asphalt paving materials. The first hot plant was located in downtown Sacramento, near 24th and J Streets, evolving into what is now Teichert Aggregates. Adolph Jr. and Adolph Sr. during those early years also began to discuss the need for a cohesive voice to represent contractors from Northern California. They met with 12 contracting groups in 1915 at the San Francisco offices of W.A. Bechtel, and helped form the Northern California chapter of the Associated General Contractors of America. Adolph Jr. served as chapter president of Northern California AGC in 1931 and was elected 30th national president of AGC in 1949. Between 1916 and 1918, the company completed its first large-scale engineering project, the Sacramento Bypass Weir. Unfortunately, the company's first major financial setback arose from this job. 
Adolf Sr. was not convinced the project would benefit the company. Adolf Jr. was eager to win such a contract, so he took personal financial responsibility for any losses. During the job, World War I was declared, creating shortages in materials and manpower, greatly increasing costs. The job completed with a $40,000 loss to the partnership that Adolf Jr. had to repay over many years. It was a lesson well learned, he once said. The 20s saw hurried growth as the company continued to focus on road and highway paving. The first administrative manager, Pete Schoening, was hired in 1922 to help track costs on early paving projects in Placerville, Fresno, Redwood City, Vacaville, Woodland, and the Davis to Winters Highway. The company incorporated in 1927 with Adolf Teichert Sr. as president, Adolf Teichert Jr. as vice president, and P.W. Schoening as secretary treasurer. The firm became known as A. Teichert & Son Incorporated. On August 24, 1929, a. Teichert & Son Incorporated received California State Contractors License No. 8. This license, still in use today, is the oldest active contractor's license in the state of California. More than 1 million contractor's licenses have been awarded since that day. The 1930s were an era of diversification for the company. Adolph Jr. saw the need to reduce material cost and ensure supply. In 1935, Teichert purchased the Perkins Gravel Company a sand and gravel mining operation on the south side of the American River in Sacramento. The following year in 1936, the company purchased its first five concrete mixer trucks and entered the Sacramento supplier market for ready-mix concrete. Soon after, the company constructed its first debris dam on the North Fork of the American River, creating what is now called Lake Clementine. Around the same time, Tykert entered into its first joint venture, a project with Ralph A. Bell Construction and United Concrete Pipe to construct tunnels and relocate rail and telegraph lines at the new Shasta Dam site north of Redding, California. As the decade came to a close, the third generation of Tykert family joined the firm. Frederick Q. Tykert, another Cal Berkeley graduate, ran field work and quickly established himself as the likely successor to his father. The onset of World War II directed the work of A. Tykert & Son from December 7, 1941 until the war ended. All the firm's resources were tied to the war effort, directly and indirectly, with Tykert projects ranging from airports, ammunition storage facilities, runways, landing strips, and roads to utilities, water and light and fuel systems. At this point, Tykert employed 300 people. Tragedy struck when Frederick Q. Teichert passed away from a battle with cancer in 1944 at the age of 29. Soon after, the company patriarch, Adolf Teichert Sr. died at the age of 91. A short seven years later saw the death of company head Adolf Teichert Jr. in 1953. Suddenly, within nine short years, all the founding generations of A. Teichert & Son were gone. Henry Teichert, son of Adolf Jr. and prominent local attorney, joined the company in 1953 after his father's death to aid in the transition. In response to his own lack of construction background, Henry Teichert began to develop professional managers from within his corporation by instigating seminars, management retreats, and in-house programs, all to meet the challenging business environment. Henry quickly assumed the role of executive vice president and general manager and recruited his brother Adolf Teichert III and brother-in-law Lewis Riggs to assist with company management. Post-World War II prosperity saw California's population doubled between 1940 and 1960. This boom brought increased demand for highways, subdivisions, and civil infrastructure. The company established permanent construction district offices in Woodland and Stockton. Subsequent district offices opened in Marysville, Tahoe, Chico, and Los Angeles. During this period, the company took a prominent role in water infrastructure construction. Earthen fill dam and concrete river canal work was performed throughout the western U.S., from Los Angeles to Seattle, from Nebraska to San Jose. The largest such project, building of the Trinity Dam, was awarded to a Tiger joint venture in 1957 for $56 million. Adjusted for inflation, the contract would be worth approximately $494 million today. During the same period, production and sales of construction materials flourished. The company acquired Del Paso Sand and Gravel in Sacramento, Kent Materials in Stockton, and Tracy Rock and Gravel in Tracy, 
to keep up with the demand for aggregate, asphalt, and concrete products. Notable road construction projects during this period were the rebuilding expansion of the Grapevine Interstate 5 between Los Angeles and Bakersfield, Highway 99 Dunsmuir, Highway 40, later called Interstate 80, expansion for the 1960 Winter Olympics, and Highway 99 between Manteca and Stockton. As the company grew and expanded, it also changed with the times. In 1958, materials production operations were consolidated into what is now known as Tykert Aggregates. The new entity was created with a shared management team focused on bringing value to both internal and external customers. In 1968, A. Tykert and Son Incorporated created the Mobile Equipment Division, which supplies and maintains equipment for aggregate and construction operations. Also with growth came significant investment in the company's future. The new Perkins Rock Plant in Sacramento opened in 1966, producing over 1,000 ton per hour. Perkins has remained in the top 10 producing sand and gravel plants nationally for the past 50 years. In the late 1960s, Tiger developed the current corporate headquarters on exhausted Del Paso sand and gravel plant site. This was the company's first large-scale mine reclamation and redevelopment project. As the 1970s began, Henry Tykert retired from day-to-day -day operations and passed control of the company to his brother-in-law, Lou Riggs. As CEO for the next 30 years, Lou Riggs oversaw periods of both consolidation and expansion. District construction offices were closed in Los Angeles and Tahoe, Reno to better focus on Central Valley operations. In 1971, the company adopted the iconic Tykert Green paint scheme for its on-highway equipment fleet. This was done as part of a greater emphasis on safety, as the bright green was determined to have the greatest visibility in both daylight and nighttime conditions. The company diversified into new areas, including the manufacture and sale of ice under the trade name Tykert Ice and the distribution of construction chemicals under the name Tykert Tectonics. During this time, Tykert Construction created Heavy Engineering, a standalone division specializing in the procurement and construction of large highway projects throughout Northern California. Blue Riggs often regretted not having more time to focus on corporate philanthropic giving. The company had always given generously to the community, but efforts were not always well coordinated. In 1990, the Tykert Foundation was formed as the corporation's charitable arm, and Fred Tykert, son of Henry, appointed foundation executive director since its inception. The Tigard Foundation has provided millions in support of local charities. The foundation was also instrumental in establishing the first Boys and Girls Club in Sacramento. The final decade of the 20th century saw the company focus on private works, including subdivisions and commercial site work. The rapid economic expansion seen in the California Central Valley again spurred an era of growth for Tigard. New construction regional offices were established in Placer and Fresno counties. Materials production expanded into the Fresno, Marysville, and Auburn markets. By the year 2000, the first rock was produced at Vernalis, a new state-of-the-art automated rock plant near Tracy, California. Tykert has been a pillar of the construction industry for more than 130 years. Today, the company is under the leadership of Judd Riggs, CEO and great-grandson of the company founder. The 21st century also brought Mary Tykert to the company representing the fifth generation of Adolf Tykert's family. Over the course of its long and storied history, Tykert has grown into a diverse mix of businesses, including Tykert Construction, Tykert Materials, Stonebridge Properties, and the Tykert Foundation. Tykert Construction, builder of heavy civil infrastructure projects, provides grading, paving, and underground services to both public and private clients from offices throughout Northern and Central California. Recently, Tyker Construction opened new regional offices, one in Pleasanton to pursue ever-expanding San Francisco Bay Area development opportunities, and a second to focus on the construction of commercial solar infrastructure. Tyker Materials, one of the largest suppliers in the nation, produces aggregate, asphalt, and concrete products at dozens of locations around California's Central Valley. Expansion into the Reno, Nevada market in 2010 brought the production and sale of construction materials under the trade names American Ready Mix and Western Nevada Materials. Tiger Pipelines, a construction contractor focusing on gas infrastructure, serves the needs of utility companies and private clients in Northern and Southern California. 
Stonebridge Properties plans and develops sustainable communities by restoring industrial land into uses that benefit the needs of the larger community. Tykert Foundation, the company's philanthropic arm, expresses the company's commitment to build and preserve a healthy and prosperous region by supporting local community organizations and charitable causes. Today, Tykert employs nearly 2,000, many of whom have worked for the company their entire careers. And the work of second, third, and even fourth generations of employee families are an example of the commitment people have to Tykert, its clients, and the community. From the sidewalks built 130 years ago by immigrant Adolf Teichert to the massive civil infrastructure projects constructed today by the dedicated family of employees, Teichert's commitment has remained the same. Improve our communities. Be ethical and straightforward in our dealings. Provide safe careers for our employees and build value for our customers. Teichert. Building trust since 1887.